It's the grand final of The Sound of Perfume and the culmination of a three-month process for students from the Royal College of Music. It's now down to nine finalists and their compositions inspired by three Clive Christian perfumes will be performed for the first time in front of an invited audience and a distinguished judging panel. This panel will choose a winning piece for each perfume before the audience vote for their overall favourite. Here's what the judges had to say before the performance. I think we've got a real mix of judges here. We've got some very serious musicians, conductors and performers. But we also have people from the luxury goods industry and fragrance is a very luxury product. And there's no more luxury product than Clive Christian. What I'm particularly looking for is to see the, the diversity and the variety of executions. It's very, very exciting. I actually heard a bit on... Um, on the semi-finals and I think the standard is extremely high and uh, quite a, a revelation. So, If you are a composer you are looking for things to inspire you, whether it's art, artwork or environment, love, uh, but the idea of it being a, an olfactory sensation seems to have ignited the enthusiasm. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for The Sound of Perfume, which is a collaboration between the Royal College of Music and luxury British perfume house, Clive Christian. My name is Victoria Christian, and I'm delighted to be joining William Mival this evening uh, to explore the synergy between those two wonderful and evocative art forms, perfume and music, and what happens when those two worlds collide. So, uh, if you'll lend us your ears and your noses, and in the words of Baudelaire, let sound and perfume swirl in the evening air as we introduce the sound of perfume. So this is where you start to become involved and really take the journey that the finalists themselves took in October, where you close your eyes, lift your noses, and start to feel the smell of the perfume 1872. What you start to smell is delicate mandarins, rosemary, lavender, blueberry, very sparkling feminine notes to start with. And then slowly that starts to unravel. And inch by inch, what starts to emerge is the heart of the perfume. And that is the queen of the flowers, the rose de May, a rose that only blooms in May, and so very rare and precious that 170 roses are required for every single drop. Now with that delicious scent in your nostrils, we're now going to hear pieces by the three finalists who each wrote for this 1872 perfume. The second perfume of our evening is Perfume X, entirely different. You'll start to feel that perfume rolling out through the auditorium, the brightness and the ripeness of those top notes, and the bass, that deep warmth of the cardamom, the orris, the cedar wood, the Mexican vanilla in the bass notes there. And then just short, brief glimpses of the heart, that dynamic and demanding Egyptian jasmine. 
Queen Cleopatra herself recognised the power of that blossom. Egyptian jasmine was soaked into the ship's sails for her journey to meet Mark Anthony. They say that their love affair started on the winds as she blew towards him because he was captured by that intoxicating essence. We're now going to hear the three finalists chosen to best represent the Perfume X. One final category this evening, and that is the category of number one perfume. It was created without limitations, without boundaries, simply to be the very best that it could possibly be, encasing some of Mother Nature's rarest and most precious natural ingredients. One drop is so dense that it takes hours and hours and hours to unravel and reveal the secrets throughout the perfume top notes, heart notes, and bass notes. Number one perfume was presented to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II on the occasion of her Golden Jubilee, which is her 50th year on the throne. And number one perfume, much, um, in a much similar way that it's happening this evening, perfumes the gardens of Sir Elton John's White Tie and Tiara Ball. We're now going to hear the three finalists chosen in this number one category, the three composers who have written for the number one perfume. So I think we'll ask the judges to make their way to the deliberating room. And without further ado, I will wish you a wonderful interval and say that when you come back, we have a rather special performance from Escala. With the judges going away to deliberate, click on part two to find out which piece they select for each perfume and the result of the audience vote to decide the overall winner of The Sound of Perfume. <laughs> 